is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. You have to be strong in today's world. Keep your focus and up. What you believe in how, how to achieve all your dreams. Keep moving forward. Never accept less than who you are. Live your best life. Be strong and free. It's the hit back. With the hash of black. It's the hit back. With the hash of black. The hit back with the hash black is sponsored by the Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Bahara Treat and Spa, Kalina Financial Advisors Limited, and J.S. Johnson. Muted. I'm talking to myself that whole time. Good afternoon, Bahamas. And welcome to the Hit Back. I'm your host, Nahaja Black. It is a beautiful day here in the 242. I hope that you are doing well, taking care of yourself, living your best life. I hope that we are accomplishing some dreams today, that we are writing down some visions today, that we are thinking and contemplating the next big move. Even if you are in a small space, even if you find that you have limiting beliefs, move into that unlimited sphere and move your life forward. Just because we've had an election doesn't mean your world has changed. What it means is that there is new opportunities and hope, not new opportunities, but hope that we will get the sort of governance we need, that we will move and transition as a people out of a constant state of uh, disrepair, that we will get the excitement that we once hoped for. That is the hope. But we've hoped many times in governments. We've hoped many times. I am a woman that believes that you create the tools for your own success, that you continue to fashion. You go in places that you feel uncomfortable, not uncomfortable in your moral choices. Always stand firm on your principles, but uncomfortable because we're seeking greatness. Greatness is never an easy road. It is not the wide road. It is the narrow road. It is the place where even your parents may not believe you can ride on. And so when we get to that space, when you're uncomfortable with being average, then I believe that we as a people can then decide that we we cannot stand for mediocrity. And uh, so, you know, there's so many things that are going on. Again, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to the hit back with Nahaja Black, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. You guys know one of the things that I love to do, uh, I love to talk about the state of the country, but in a progressive way. And when I say that, I'm not trying to big myself up here, but that you get, you get smarter minds, right? And by no means, y'all know I only sound smart because I got smart people who's come on the show. Y'all know that's the truth. The truth is that I sound smarter because I ask smart people questions and they answer it and then I nod. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> but today I'm excited because I got a, a wonderful, a dynamic duo uh, professors that are going to share with us some extremely interesting thoughts um, because they are trailblazers in their own right. And I want to introduce you to them. And before I bring them on air, because the, 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 of course, we've heard about the junk bond bond status. Of course, we know that today, actually at four o'clock right now, our new prime minister, newly minted prime minister, Philip Davis, is walking the halls of the Princess Margaret Hospital, uh, all in hopes to get a tour and see what's the situation there with regards to COVID and our patients. My mother, uh, yesterday, everyone I was missing because I had to take care of my mom and uh, she was at the hospital, but I, you know, God is good. She's home. We picked her up this morning. So that's why I wasn't on air yesterday. But um, just that, you know, we, we are in a state of affairs. And one of the things that I wanted to discuss even before the election is this topic of COVID-19, um, the economies of the Caribbean, COVID-19 Sustainable de- development and the economies of the Caribbean. And I wanted to introduce you to two persons who will be joining me with this conversation. And I'm just happy that they're both uh, within the diaspora, you know, this, this, this Caribbean love and uh, intelligence. Man, I just love it. So I want to present to you, of course, introduction. This uh, young lady has been on the show before. My good friend Herbert Edwards invited her on. So, I, you know, I, I owe Hubert this one. Uh, Professor Rosalie Hamilton 
is the CEO of the Lasco Chin Foundation since June 2018 and chair of the Caribbean Philanthropic Alliance since 2019. She was vice president at the University of Technology, Jamaica, 2008 to 2018, and was awarded a professorship in the Scotiabank Chair in Entrepreneurship and Development. She established and led the MSME Alliance, a network of small business organizations for 10 years, y'all. She also established the Institute of Law and Economics and worked as a consultant and public educator on trade, governance, gender, and other areas of economic and social development. She has taught at the graduate and undergraduate levels in Jamaica and the U.S. She was special advisor, you already Special advisor and trade policy consultant in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade from 2000 to 2003, and served as chief ambassador to the Prime Minister of Jamaica. You all hear that too? Chief ambassador, let me make sure, chief advisor to the Prime Minister of Jamaica. May 20, 2006 to 2007, she is currently a board director for Lasco Manufacturing Limited and National Integrity Action right? And make sure all of that, I'm saying all of this right, right? Just to make sure. <laughs> uh, a corruption watchdog organization. As chair of the Caribbean Philanthropic Alliance, she's currently leading a Caribbean tree planting project, which planted more than 1 million trees across 20 Caribbean countries, territories during the period of February 20th to May 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Rosalie Hamilton. Okay. Professor Hamilton, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? Thanks so much for having me. Sorry to hear about your mom. We should well, she's good now, thank God. She's home, good. right? And she's, okay. she, she gave me a good rowing. That's a good behavior, mommy. Why it took so long <laughs> to pick me up. So she's back. She's okay. Uh, Great. But we also have someone else I wanted to introduce, Dr. Hamilton, who you introduced to me, and I'm excited to have him join us on the show. And uh, this gentleman here, ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited to have him. Professor, you all got to hear this name. Now, you can't tell me this ain't like the strongest name you've ever heard. Like right after Vin Dames, right? Vin Rames, you got Professor Vanus James. And he's a former senior policy advisor, UNDP and World Intellectual Property Organization, international consultant. He also served as senior research fellow in the Scotiabank Chair in Entrepreneurship and Development, an adjunct a distinguished professor of economics, econometrics, University of Technology, Jamaica. Dr. James is the author of three WIPO reports. And again, that is the World Intellectual, World Intellectual Property Organization, measuring the contribution of copyright-based industries to Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, and the OECS, as well as author of the UNECLAC manual, the design and conduct of public expenditure reviews in Caribbean countries. Whew. He is also the co-author of the recently published book, in 2021, competing for development, perspectives on self-sustaining growth for Caribbean Caribbean economies. You'll hear the name of that book, Competing for Development, Perspectives on Self-Sustaining Growth for Caribbean Economies. The central uh, thesis of his published works is referred journals and books. In referred journals and books is that the main development problem of Caribbean countries is that the domestic capital sector is too small. And you, y'all don't know how excited I am just on that thesis alone, because that is one of those. Uh, and, and Professor James, I want to welcome you, everyone. Professor Vanus James, welcome to the show, Professor. Oh, and just unmute yourself there for me. Oh, we're going to get him, Professor James, right now. There yeah, you go. Thank you. Thank you, Nahan. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you and, for uh, being on the show. Us, I, your mommy the best. Yes, thank you. And I, trust me, she's listening, so <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> you know, thank you both so much for joining us and um, for lending your time. I know that you both are very busy uh, individuals, so I'm very grateful. And uh, thank you so much for the time. That's the first thing. And I appreciate you so much for coming. The conversation, uh, <laughs> Professor Hamilton and Professor James, is that of Caribbean nations, the, the strategy of economic growth. We normally would have our challenges with economic growth regardless, right? How to diversify our smaller economies, how to not, a lot of countries like us, Caribbean ones, tend to lean to tourism, in particular the Bahamas, heavily leans on tourism. When you look at uh, Caribbean nations from your vantage point, 
from the economies of scales that you mentioned, Professor James, from Dr. Hamilton, your position of looking at it just overall, even in its class structure with the economics that we deal with. What is your take home thought, the initial economic thesis that you have on Caribbean nations? I'll start with you, Dr. Hamilton. Wow, that's a tough one to start <laughs> because, you know, I think the way to think about our economies is not necessarily what's happening now, but, you know, the context of which we're, we're operating. So there's a long view of our struggles since in the, uh, emancipation, you know, independence, what we've been grappling with, the underlying inherited conditions that we've met and the extent to which we've transformed those. So that's one perspective that is, you know, complex, deep, but hopefully it's something that we'll touch on. And one way to think about that is that, you know, there's a lot of underutilized resources in our society, especially among human capital. Um, we are not really, um, you know, getting the, 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 the potential of our people is not being fully realized. I, I noted your own comments, you know, you know, wanting a society in which we can all become who we want to be. And there are all kinds of issues, social and economic issues that prevent that. So, so there are those perspectives, but I want to just share the perspective that comes with the um, sustainable development goals that all our countries in the regions have signed on to. And the um, sustainable development report in 2020 try to capture where the, some of the countries in the Caribbean, 16 countries in the Caribbean are up to 2020. And what it told us is on the very areas we committed to doing better on, uh, more than 60% of the countries that reported have reported major or significant challenges and decreasing trends in several of these areas. And I'll just point to some of them to give you a perspective. The matter of hunger, all countries said that they're doing very badly on those uh, measures. Clean water, sanitation, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. Inequalities, very, very much what I wrote about um, just recently in terms of the issues here in Jamaica, but all countries reported. In fact, there were only four countries that reported on that measure, but all four said the same thing. They're declining trends or significant problems. And also peace and justice. Of course, that's where the crime problem is. Um, unfortunately, Jamaica last year was the worst, had the highest rate of murders in this entire hemisphere. So wow. that gives you a sense of where we are right up to COVID. Now, COVID has exacerbated these issues. And so I, I would suggest that there's a longer term perspective that we can't ignore when we try to un analyze today's problem. And these gives you the sustainable development goals, just give you a kind of perspective now as to um, how things are prior to the pandemic. Mm. Uh, Professor James? <laughs> right now, well, um, I have a very simple idea that I think the science supports for pretty much all Caribbean economies. And that is that um, we make progress by uh, producing capital, mm -hmm. using it, and exporting it. And um, that's the basis on which we raise the standard of living and meet all of the development goals Professor, Professor Hamilton just mentioned. Uh, we're not doing well enough there. Uh, that's the central thesis you mentioned when you introduced me. Mm -hmm. I think all of the evidence we have uh, comes to the fact that we have really only two economies in the Caribbean, in the in the island space, that are doing well enough on that front. And one is Bermuda, mm -hmm. and the other is Cayman Islands. All the rest, including Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana and Barbados and so on, are doing very poorly on the production and export of, of capital. And therefore, all are failing to achieve the standard of living that you see in these two uh, islands, in, in the Cayman Islands and in, um, and in Bermuda. And until we learn the lessons of those two economies and uh, take steps to boost our capacity to produce capital and trade with it, 
uh, we'll be in, in trouble achieving the goals Professor Hamilton identified as the sustainable development goals. That's the fundamental thesis I have. And I think that that's so interesting because that we look at those two, right? We look at those two and uh, I'd have to ask both of you, do you consider them their financial centers more than they are touristic centers? We would say that that's their primary economy, right? We can agree. Well, it isn't that they are financial centers. That's, that's the wrong way to look at them. Mm -hmm. They produce financial capital services and export them. They ah. do it with the help of international investors, but that's the same way we will have to do it if we wanted to go into those sectors or if we wanted to go into education for export or healthcare for export or even to boost our capabilities in the creator industries. All of them would require international collaboration to do them properly. But the thing about them, those two economies, is that is not that they are financial centers as much as that they are producers mm. of financial capital, some of which they use at home. They attract tourists to their, their, their space on the basis of that. The bulk of their tourists are tied to that. And they export almost all of it. In other words, it's not focused on what the Cayman Islands needs in the domestic market or in the, in the Bermuda market. Not, that's not how they look at it. They look at supplying a service to the world. Mm. That's the key. And that's the same thing we have to do with education and healthcare and our creative industries and so on. It's music and all of that. Supplying capital services to the world. That's very it's interesting. Very, if I go ahead, ahead. it's an important perspective because um, from our inception, we've been integrated in the world economy. And the challenge has been the terms of engagement. And so, um, yes, we have a lot of tourist economists highly dependent on tourism. But the, the way in which we um, integrate, the, the extent to which that, th that those industries are dominated by the things we do, things we produce, is the issue. For example, in Jamaica, we have debates here about the extent to which tourists consume Jamaican entertainment versus mm -hmm. imported entertainment. You know, the extent to which when they buy um, goods as well as services, these are largely imported goods or domestically created goods and services. And so the terms of engagement is critical. And I think that's one of the differences that are being highlighted. Interesting. Um, you mentioned terms of engagement, right, uh, Dr. Hamilton? And... Um, and if you're just tuning in, and I know we have to take a quick break, so actually let me ask that question on the other side of the break. We have joining us, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, two renowned professors, and not just professors, but doctors, uh, entrepreneurs, businessmen, creators of establishment, creators of policy, uh, think tank leaders in Dr. Rosalie Hamilton and Dr. Vanish James. And I'm so excited that they're joining us today on the show. We're talking about economic sustainability uh, for Caribbean nations. And in this new COVID era, um, also the things that we've learned about Caribbean economies as well. Uh, Professor James, that market size thing is a big one. And I, it stuck with me for something that happened that was mentioned in the other administration, a former administration, that I don't think they stuck to their guns with this idea. But I want to ask you that a particular question on the other side of the break. And also, uh, Professor Hamilton, this terms of engagement how were we supposed to engage uh, as a small nation with foreign direct investment? How should we view foreign direct investment when we talk about sustainability goals? You're listening to The Hit Back with Nahaja Black Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. We will be back right after this. Insurance agents are the best. Reliable service within 
smile. Have you heard about the COVID vaccine raffle? If you are vaccinated against COVID-19, you can enter to win amazing prizes like food store gift certificates, hotel stays, beach excursions, and so much more. Even if you are previously vaccinated, you can still enter to win. The COVID vaccine is free, safe, and protects you from severe COVID-19 infections. Don't delay. Get vaccinated today and enter to win. Visit www.baxbahamas.com to register. What happened to you? You look like you lost your paycheck. Man, I just realized I got scammed out of a bunch of money. They said I won this contest and just needed me to send them some money so I could collect. I mean, to expedite something. Or was it to smooth the process? Man, you're smarter than that. Protect yourself against scams and fraud by following these tips. If you know you didn't enter a competition, you can't win. Never pay to receive a cash prize. If you're being asked, you're being scammed. Check trusted internet sites for verification of information given to you. Do not give your banking details to people you don't know. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. Monitor your bank account regularly for any questionable transactions. Get more information at getmoneysmartbahamas.com. Baja sugar, sugar, let's get sugary. Softer, smoother, and amazing skin. Oh, Baja sugar, sugar, we're the sugar ladies. Giving you skin soft as a baby's. Goodbye hair, we'll take good care of you. Come visit us at Baja Retreat Spa on East Bay Street. Contact us at 323-6711 or visit us online at www.bahiretreat.com. When I had got prostate cancer, my family didn't know if I was going to live at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Within days, I got an appointment. They presented me with treatment options and they set up a robotic prostatectomy. When my scans came back, there are no signs of cancer. They don't see you as a number, they see you as a part of family. I'm going on with my life. It's a real gift. Call us at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. You invest in your children, your home, and your community. But are you investing in your financial future? At CFAO, we specialize in investment management, retirement planning, mutual funds, and private wealth management. Our team of experts never stops helping you plan for tomorrow. Because tomorrow begins today. Call us at 502-7010 to see what our financial advisors can do for you. CFAO. Growing wealth for future generations. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. You're listening to the Hit Back with Nahaja Black Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Listen, y'all, stick and stay. I want, you know, this this is Tuesday, my first show back for the week, and I meant for it to be heavy. We're going to learn today. You think I'm playing with y'all? We're going to learn today. Can't get swing no more, you know. We can't get swing no more in my Bahamian vernacular. Sorry, I got guests, you know, and I try, and I'm supposed to be smarter than this, but it ain't working. Uh, <laughs> so I want to bring on... My guests, uh, <laughs> Professor Rosalie Hamilton. Hubert uh, is listening, uh, Doc, and he's saying, you know, bless up. You know, he got it. You know, that's that's the best he has. Bless up. <laughs> bless up, Hubert. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, Professor Vanus James. Both of you, thank you so much again for joining us on the show. I know that uh, your time, I, I even forgot the time difference, so thank you for the time all the way live in Jamaica. We're doing the show that way. Um so our discussion is economic sustainability, development of Caribbean nations in this now COVID era. And I don't know if you can say post-COVID, right? Um, because I don't know if there will be a post-COVID. It's like a live with COVID kind of thing. And our economy is struggling, but we had the dual threat of Dorian and then COVID 
19, right? So our economy hasn't rebounded or we couldn't catch ourselves and then COVID. And then you have policies and all of these things that affect an economy. We know that uh, in Jamaica, there was an election um, recently that you have your own, you know, local politics that is happening with the COVID era. Um, I know in Trinidad and Tobago, they are challenged with uh, fiscal issues just as we are um, uh, seriously challenged, uh, you know, the call to tighten up. And all across the Caribbean, minus those two that Professor James mentioned, Bermuda, and the, the uh, Cayman Islands, we're struggling, right? And Dr. Hamilton, you mentioned something that I, I, I love that terms of engagement, right? And I'm curious, for me, all I see is a dance, right? When you say terms of engagement, it's sort of the uh, negotiations and understanding of oneself, understanding the person you're going to be meeting or this, the way we are going to connect um, or not. And, and I wanna ask this question to you, as a small island nation we, with a small economy that one person could pay the whole debt of, right? That you have billionaires who can pay the entire debt and still have change from our, for our economy. How, how, how should a country like ours, how should Caribbean countries present themselves to the world when we're talking about sustainable development? You know, my best answer is the way our athletes present themselves to the world and our musicians. They become the best they can be and they engage with the kind of self-confidence that says, I can win. And they do win. And the issue of size must always be put in perspective because we are among the smallest nations in the world, yet we give the rest of the world real competition when it comes to things like sports and in other areas. So um, the, the terms of engagement, it's kind of like a dance, as you say, who leads the dance, who drives the dance, who choreographs the dance, who, who, you know, who ultimately shapes that, the, the, that image, that picture of that dance. Um, you know, if you think about where we're coming from, that's why my first reaction is, boy, you can't, we can't really grapple with our problems today unless we look back. And we've inherited a highly dependent economy, dependent on imports. We, the, the few things we exported, you know, the bauxites, the sugar, et cetera, um, were exported on terms that were not ours. Um, the price was set externally, um, you know, technology used, again, not ours. And uh, for a long time, that's been the structure of our economy hasn't changed fundamentally. We haven't really shifted the dependence on foreign investment, foreign capital, foreign technology, the high import dependence. I mean, our food food imports is, you know, amazing. Um, and and, the, and the, the balance of payments it has created with respect to an, an has created debt. So we have a highly indebted balance of payments problems are all inheritance. How do we turn that around? Well, the key point that I think Vanus James's own work, um, years of study and penetrating of this very, very important concept of domestic capital mm -hmm. is the concept that says, listen, if we create the technology, if we drive that terms of engagement on terms that we control, we can uh, design the techniques, we can, uh, you know, create the packaging, the content, whatever, on terms in which we can create the price. So we're, we become price makers rather than price takers, okay? So we create the terms that is led by creativity. And, and, it's, and it's best and easiest in, in many ways when you are, you, are, you are the innovators, you have intellectual property rights. You're not copying anybody else. So you're not behind the ball, right? So you're leading and so on. Now, when you do that, you begin to shift away from the high import dependence and therefore the indebtedness to the earning of the critical foreign exchange we need in order to balance our books. And so we now can um, you know, manage the runaway inflation that we tend to see because of um, the um, high cost of foreign exchange, et cetera. And we ultimately now earn enough foreign exchange to pay our way 
and reduce the debt. So in a nutshell, that's the kind of shifting of the terms of engagement we need in order to, on different terms that enable us to pay our way in the world and to have sustainable development. Uh, Professor James, how do we pivot? How does this, how do small nations begin that pivot? How do we, um, you know, because something that you, in, in both you, yours and uh, Dr. Hamilton's presentation is that uh, what I gleaned from it is that the, the assets of our nations is the people, right? Um, how do we export ourselves as human capital and, and not in the sense of labor, but in innovation? Um, how do we make that pivot? Uh, for example, I look at us in our country where we are having uh, challenges within the educational system to increase that, that grade level so that we can have a more intellectual base or more skilled base by which you can export uh, your intellectual property, right? Our innovations. So how do, how do small how do countries that are cash strapped and uh, not able to invest in certain things the way I don't know if they'd like? Uh, I don't know. I don't want to swear for them, but <laughs> how do we make that pivot when you have constraints in budget? Well, you have to do what uh, all investors do. You have to choose what you want to do uh, rather than tag along with history, as Prof. Hamilton is saying. And you, on the basis of that move, that shift to being the the doing part. Do you, en you engage the world the way the musicians do, for example. The, the, the Jamaican musician makes reggae. They don't have to go anywhere in the world to ask anybody how to make reggae. They invent the methods of developing reggae. And then they use that to make dance hall everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. They use that. You create music in the Bahamas, and then you use that music to produce junk mm -hmm. Now, remember what we mean by capital is anything you make and use to make something else. Mm -hmm. You have to engage the world that way. You have to say, okay, for us to make a living, we'll engage like our musicians. We'll make our capital inputs mm -hmm. and then use those capital inputs to make other services. So if we wanted to continue the development of Junkuno in the Bahamas, we've got to develop capabilities to train people in the Bahamas to make music people like all over the world and then say to them, all right, instead of coming to New York to play the music for you, you come to the Bahamas to hear and yeah. see, not just in the Junkuno December season, but all through the year. And that makes a fundamental transformation of the tourism industry into mm -hmm. an industrialized tourism industry. That sort of way is the way you have to engage the world. Now, you have to bring the foreigners into the process, but you have to do it the way China does or the way the musicians do. I've heard from working in Jamaica, many foreigners say to me, Vibes Cartel is the greatest writer of music they've encountered. And this is in my work as a WIPO consultant. People yeah. have said that. So the, if you in the Bahamas wanted to think about uh, going to the best school in the world, you would say, okay, I want to go to Oxford University. Mm -hmm. Bernard is saying, if I want to write music, I come to Jamaica and learn from Vibes Cartel. Mm -hmm. So that's the term. You wow. have to become a creator, become an inventor, producer of capital. And then when you are the inventor in that sphere, not in all spheres, but in that sphere, the world comes to you uh, just by the, the fact that you are the inventor to learn from you. And that's the advantage you bring to the process. Let me just give you uh, one particular other way to look at this phenomenon. You're seeing it right now with the vaccines and COVID. Mm -hmm. Now, if you in the Bahamas had built the capacity to develop your own vaccines, the world would come to you to get some of your vaccines and they will complain that you are not providing enough vaccines. To them. <laughs> That's right. But by not building your healthcare system as a creative system, end up being a people who have to wait on AstraZeneca to make adequate supplies to you or, or, or Pfizer or or Moderna. 
And so you have to complain that they are not making vaccines available to you on a timely basis. Nobody complains about how the um, the Jamaican musician isn't making reggae suitably available to them. They find their way to Jamaica. And whether they are Japanese or Arab, they find yeah. their way to Jamaica yeah. and learn how to copy the Jamaica. That mm -hmm. is the fundamental principle in turning the, 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 the terms of, of engagement around. When you learn, when you invest deliberately in creating and producing capital and using that to solve the problems of the world, the world will come to you. And it doesn't matter in that context who you are. If you engage the world like that, that is the benefit you will reap. And those are the basis on which you develop these economies. And, and let, me, let me remind you and your audience that we have seen the world work that way for decades, all our lives, but we had not bothered to notice it, to mm. analyze the world that way. So we buy the idea that the, the best of everything is somewhere else. Nobody notices that the best of reggae music is in Jamaica and that Jamaica trades music. They sell the world reggae and then they buy soul and country from the rest of the world. And the key to the development of Jamaica is to become a net exporter of music, make such sweet music that the world will buy more music from Jamaica than Jamaica buys from the world. And that is the way you win. That's the way China wins. That's the way the Americans win. That's the way the British win. You have to get into the, the trenches, produce the capital. Okay. I think we're having just a slight technical difficulty there with, uh, uh, with Professor Vanis James there. All right, I, I, we see him back there again. I see you, Professor James, and uh, and and you were good too. You were on a roll. I just got to give you a credit. It was just it was awesome stuff right there. Um, and just for you to finish that thought, and I think you were saying that the key is that we need to be the producer of that creative property. The the the, cre the producers of capital. We make things we use to make other things. Mm -hmm. We we make music to produce dance hall. We make music to produce junkono, and then we sell the music and the junkono to the rest of the world, and that's the way we win. And we have to do that. In there are there are really four key areas in which the Caribbean could compete in doing that. Apart from what is being done in Bermuda and Cayman with financial services, we could do it with education. We could do it with with high quality, skill intensive education. First of all, we could do it with healthcare. We are all very capable. If we put our minds to doing it, we could do it in healthcare. We surely have demonstrated to the world that we could do it in all the creative industries, whether it's music or fashion. Mm -hmm. we believe in ourselves, we could compete with the world there. And then we could do it as you do it with housing services, which is a foundation for tourism. Yes. So you could do it adequately mm -hmm. in all four of those even if you the british were to block you from getting into the financial services we have always and if we put our minds to doing it and understood policy that way in 20 25 years we would be catching up very quickly with um with with bermuda and the cayman mm -hmm. sure if I can years, it won't take us a thousand yeah you know and uh this is such powerful uh uh, information. If you're just tuning in, Professor Vanis James and Professor Rosalie Hamilton. Professor Hamilton, you have con you counseled uh, politicians. You have you have uh, you know been an advisor to um, men and women across the board. The same as with Professor, I know. But when you look at it from a policy perspective, and if you were talking to the former premier, you were talking to our prime minister now, and we are looking at the. Uh, a challenge with, with with our budget, but we're saying, okay, how do we innovate in a you know this COVID era when we have to increase the value of our domestic economy, but we don't have sufficient people to create a domestic marketplace where we can you know really you know talk about well, there's only four hundred thousand of us. I don't know how much money we can make off of each other. 
plus, you know, we need U.S. reserves since we're pegged to the U.S. dollar. All of these things we, we consider. When you hear uh, Professor James's um, articulation of the pivot, how would you, what would you suggest to policymakers and saying, this is how we switch up the economy. This is how we begin to make these sort of adjustments so that we can become our own innovators. What would you say uh, to government leaders? All right, so to your point, it's, it's more about quality than quantity. It's about creativity um, because the capacity to create is endless and the focus is on the world, not, our, not only our domestic markets, yeah? Um, and I would say two things are critical now. I, see, I think in the context of the COVID pandemic, and that has had significant impact on our education system, yeah. we have to pay particular attention to that. And that's not just being able to adjust in technolog technologically in terms of, you know, our capacity to, to have online classes, et cetera, because that's kind of key now. But, and, and, and to sustain the kind of substantive learning that we need. But most importantly, to free our minds. I mean, Bob Marley has said it, you know, um, our own prime minister said it recently, Emancipation Day, emancipate ourselves from mental slavery. And none but ourselves can free our minds. And so the idea that we're good enough, we're capable enough, we're creative enough to find solutions out of this tough time is key. And so I would definitely say we have to pay attention to fixing the education system, ensuring that um, there's equal access to good quality education, um, not just good quality education for a few that we've perpetuated in countries like Jamaica for too long. Same here. Um, and, and, and so once we have that focus, the second and perhaps both need to work together is the way we govern. Because if we agree that our people are the real assets of our nation, um, the real potential of our nation lies in the hands of our people. And if we agree that we have to anchor on our, our economy and our society on our capacity to create domestic capital, then we must see that the perspectives and the views and the ideas of the people must dominate policy making and dominate decision making. It cannot, we cannot continue to govern on, to govern our countries by listening to a few. The few that are able to pay for the politics. <laughs> yeah, we've seen that too, too long. And we've seen that even the few don't benefit. They can't if you have a society that continues to underperform. Their wealth gets constrained, you know? So, so it's in everybody's interest that we create a political system, a governance arrangement in which the voices of the people can be heard. And importantly, the voices of the creators the economic actors that can, in fact, transform the economy so that we can have the sustainable development that we want. I mean, I want to say this to both of you. It's amazing how quickly time flies because, I, you know, I'm looking at the time and it's almost five o'clock. I want, before I let you both go, Professor James and Professor Hamilton joining us today on The Hit Back, I want to thank you both so much for the time. I want to ask you this. Um, if there was one thing that you could always, if you could whisper, and I, and I think uh, Dr. Hamilton, you kind of said it loud and clear just now, but I, I'll, I'll ask you this anyway. One thing you would whisper to the Bahamian people or to the Caribbean people by and large of how to reset our mindset, what would it be? In terms of just even expectations, what should we be looking for? What should be our mental space of what a country like ours is capable of doing, not based on the narrative of foreigners, but based on our actual capacity to grow? And uh, Professor James, I'll let you go first on that one. Well, I would tell Caribbean people, as I tell them right now, we've got to clean up the institutional foundations of these societies because those foundations drive everything else. And our institutions are so slow to change 
that they are detaining us. If you clean up governance properly, in the sense of ensuring that government is representative rather than cabinet dictatorship type governments like we run across the region, if you run representative governance arrangements, you have a chance if you do reform the education system the way Prof. Hamilton is saying, to emphasize the intelligences and the capabilities of all our people rather than the narrow academic track type of, type of education that we do now, uh, mm -hmm. we have a chance. So I would say reform the institutional foundations, make finance inclusive, and so on. And then on that basis, we will all be able to come together and decide on what we have to do. And people would hear and understand the point we are making about the importance of producing capital as the basis for development. Mm. Uh, Dr. Hamilton? Yeah, you know, I would simply say the future of the Caribbean is in our hands. We have the capability of creating the society we want. We think that what we see and what we've in, uh, inherited is, you know, fairly fixed. It, it's rigid. In Jamaica, we say, I saw the thing set. But, but it's not set permanently. That's how it is now. We can change it. The capacity to change is in your hands. And I want to end by crediting you as one of the bright um, journalists in the region that I see who prepare to take time out of your program to engage these kinds of conversations. Very, very important. And it's a decision you make. Similarly, we can all make the kinds of decisions in our own places, in our own spaces that gets us to question and to dialogue and to shift our thinking and all in an effort to empower us to do better. We can do it, we have done it, and I think we can continue to do it in the future. But let's just believe in ourselves and know that we can do it. I, I, I tell you, I'm so honored to have you both on, Professor Rosalie Hamilton, Professor Vanus James. Ladies and gentlemen, please go on and, and find and follow them. Both of these individuals are just so inspiring for the work that they do and for the impact that they make across the world. And so that is why I love Caribbean people. You can't keep us down. We are effervescent, 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 effervescent. All of a sudden I can't remember words, but you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Hamilton, Professor James. It's a pleasure having you both. And uh, you're listening to the hit back with Thanks, Mahatma. Mahatma. Thank you. We'll be back right after this. Everyone have a great moment. When we come back, of course, we got to talk cabinet stuff. It's a new government and we have a cabinet. And I missed that yesterday. So we'll discuss that. C.A. Nuri, my good friend, will be joining me. We'll be back right after this. Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. It's a hit back hey. with the hash of black. Hey. It's a hit back hey. with the hash of black. Hey. It's a hit back hey. with the hash of black. Hey. It's a hit back hey. with the hash of black. You're listening to the hit back with Nahaja Black Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. I hope that everybody's doing well, taking care of yourself. Can I say, before I bring in my good friend C.A. Nuri, who is still yet to get me my counsel, Elisa Raman did win. She did mash him up. Yeah. And I feel like I won everything else. He keeps bringing up this one thing like I would have bet on an independent. Come on. I was rooting for him, but I ain't putting my good counsel money on no independent. You know, it's $14 in the time of COVID. I think this is a game, eh? That's a couple, how many, how much a bamboo shot snack costs? I on this keto diet now, so I can't. I only can daydream about fries. My husband just gave me the bad news. I can't even have the mango in my cow salad. Anyway, so 
before we get to that, I want to thank everyone that I came across yesterday. Um, my my mom was not well yesterday. Uh, we had a scare. She spent some. She spent the whole day between doctors and and between seeing a doctor, a private doctor, and then going to the hospital. But she's home this morning, so I'm very happy. That's why you guys missed me yesterday because around that time I was at the hospital. Anyways, during that day yesterday, met a lot of people out there at PMH. So I want to say a shout out to Miss Bridgewater. I saw you, Miss Bridgewater, at the desk. Then I saw Miss Wilson today at the desk. Dr. Christina Wells, A and E. Um, who else? There's so many people. I can't keep up. Obviously, I want to say special thanks to Dr. Dwayne Sands, who I was able to call as my lifeline. And Doc was like, "Bring her. That's my dude. Tell you, that's my beige brother." With like 20 million children, so obviously I will never eat at their house. There's no space. <laughs> so I want to send a special thanks to, to the Sands family also yesterday. Um, I got my good friend C.A. Nuri joining me. So yesterday we had cabinet pics and posts. My friend looks clean. My God, man, this is, this is what a new day does for you, Cecil. You even wearing yellow. You unmute yourself, oh, for God's sake, man. I think you intentionally mute me. So when I come on, I look foolish. But I, that's okay, though. Oh, that's okay. I just smiles still. That's good. Because it's a new day. Oh. And I am here celebrating. <laughs> yeah, I hope she feels better too. Thanks, Rain. Uh, just uh, Nobody's into you. Just give me my count salad. I uh, want to say hello to Herbert Meadows, who's in Louisiana watching the show. Shout out, Herbert. And everybody in Grand Bahama. And everyone who knows that you know Cecil needs to learn to pay his debts to society. And his good wife. I know she knows too. So I, I expect in my payback. But we digress. Hi, buddy. You look so clean. I remember what I bet. I, I, I won two bets, all of you. But for some reason, I am now responsible for the Kong salad. I yeah. find that kind of ironic, but it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. You know? so. if, you, if you need Kong salad that desperately to manipulate what we vote on, I mean, it is what it is. I'll drive all the way out, all the way out, all the way out there, tropical gardens to get you a Kong salad, you know, <laughs> just because you won't win. But I know what I I know what I bet on. I, I know bet I on the independent. I know what I what I signed my no, name. No, 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 no. You, you know what I, I knew. You bet. I knew no. Reese Chipman was not going to win. We knew and that too. Michael Pine was not going to win. That's when I wasn't too sure, but but yeah, I didn't I know. bet on it. That's why I bet on it. That's why I bet, why I bet on it. All right, yeah, all right. It is, what, it is what it is. It is what it is. It's just stop being cheap. Get my count salad. Anyways, so we've got <laughs> some new members of. Uh, new members of parliament, but new cabinet ministers, right? Yes. So now we are now building a cabinet, the prime minister, they're quickly moving along. Market difference from the first, <laughs> it was funny, I just, let's compare five years or four and a half years. This is a different yes. intro. Yes. But what I am liking, Cecil, is that they seem to understand the magnitude of the situation we're yes. in. And, they seem uh, sober. They seem sober, yeah. yes. And everything that they're saying is forward moving. I like that, right? Um, how Kedis, interesting things have happened so far. Simon Wilson, the actual financial secretary, is back to work. Yes. Right? Even though we were paying him, and uh, and not on any fault of his own, but we were paying two financial secretaries, uh, Simon Wilson. So they, the PRP already have a saving money. Already. Because they get the one. Already? And so we don't, we don't pay two no more. We pay just one. So that's yeah, that's yeah. our salary we're saving. My God, that's already some expenditure cuts. What a there time. You go. There you go. A time. So we have Simon Wilson coming back um, to the, we'll see how that helps. Uh, and when I say helps, of course, already saving money. That's his rightful place. He should not have been removed un, uh, unlawfully to be, or tried to be removed unlawfully. He sued. Um, that left us having to pay two paychecks for the same post. Um, and we wonder if- I'd like to interject into that lawsuit still pending. But he did that lawsuit. Yes. Is, that's right. It isn't. Hopefully I don't think he, he doesn't that sue us anymore. But I understand. Um, the, is there back pay? Was he paid full pay or half pay? Yeah, no, man. He got his full salary. He, he good. Man, for four years. Listen, man. He need to drop that a, lawsuit. It's, I, 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 let me tell I him sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, let's move on. <laughs> I'm sorry. So can you sue the? Can you sue the other guys? Or just government is government. It just doesn't matter. We can sue the other guys. We come up to see him, Kitty. That's all it is. Just, just name a different defendant, but it's coming to the same purse. Yes. Oh, well. 
Uh, let's hope Simon has a change of heart. Um, so that is uh, Simon Wilson, the financial secretary, is now back at office. We will see if we are if that uh, changes anything at the helm in terms of our financial uh, situation. We we know we've always known that he was very competent at his position. It wasn't an issue of competency, or with why he was removed. Um, and that was his argument. There was no reason for why I was removed, right? And Nahash, I would like to ask you this. I know that the former acting financial secretary is very accommodating and accessible. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to hint that you would need to have an interview with the new financial secretary. I have to try. Uh, see, yeah. it, that ain't sound good. No, that I don't. It, good. it doesn't right. sound good at all. And moving forward, we will call him on that. I'm just making sure that you know. The okay. former one, you could have called in the pin drop. He'll come and explain the tough Every questions. Detail. And, and yes. detail and explain yes. why, you know. So we'll see the difference. And that's what I love you brought I love that you brought that up because there, there really go. Marlon Johnson, the acting financial secretary, I've said that before on this show, was that one of the things that I respected about Marlon, as with a few of those in the House of Assembly, with a few, was that they were willing to ask uh, answer the tough questions. And Marlon had no problem with showing up on a dime, uh, or not on a dime, but really being accessible to the Bahamian people. And I hope that Mr. Wilson whom I've never met before, but I will reach out to uh, when the time permits will join us and be also a friend of the show. So that would be great. Thanks, EA. Thanks yes. for that reminder. Uh, uh, while I'm there, I would like to also say that the Minister of Agriculture came on your show a couple of times too. That's my guy. Yeah, you know, I, that's know. My guy. I expect you to call the, the, the new Pintas. Minister of Agriculture and, and see what they're doing with Bumsy. There are things we need to do with food security. Mm -hmm. I need to have some ideas. Mm -hmm. So let's see how it goes. You know, I'm looking forward to all of that. Let's see. Well, let's see. We have uh, the, that's Clay Sweeting, the new minister of uh, agriculture and, res and um, what is it? Marine resources and agriculture. I've never met. There's a, quite a few people I've never met before. So I got to make calls, you know, how you are gotta you? Make calls. I, I got to make some calls. So I'm looking forward to that. Minister of finance. Uh, the minister of finance is the prime minister. The prime minister. I used to get the minister of finance back in the day. That would be uh, Peter Turnquist. I used to get the Minister of Finance back in the day. But, uh, see, well, I, I anticipate the Prime Minister to be busy. Uh, honestly, um, he has the whole cabinet to manage and, 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 and to appoint so many people. Um, I think that he's going to be dependent upon his financial secretary to keep him abreast on what's happening. And that his um, portfolio would basically be bringing the information to the House of Assembly and not being involved intimately in, in the running of the um, Ministry of Finance. But... Who knows? We'll see what happens. Well, they have. You also have Halkidis, uh, Mr. Halkidis. Economics and Minister of Economics and Financial Services, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then we have, um, of course, investment. Minister of Tourism, Aviation, and Investment. Beautiful is, mix. Beautiful yeah, mix. I love it. I think that's a great one. Personally, yes. I think it was a great for Chester Cooper. I thought it was a great one. So you have Halkidis there. You have. Uh, Chester Cooper, you have the Minister of Finance, Brave Davis. So we have that it was Chris, uh, Dr. Chris Curry would say the trifecta, right? Um, this uh, three-headed horseman of economics. So I think of, of finance. So that, that'll that be interesting to see how they work uh, in terms of their agenda to make it work. Also, AG Ryan Pinder is an interesting um, uh, choice and pick there. Your thoughts? I, you know, I, I always like Ryan Pinder, uh, but I, I would appreciate I want to say you might have done a misnomer just now. I'm calling that three-headed horseman of financial or finances. But economics is completely different. It's the outlook of the Bahamas and strategies but and also, in contrast to finances. And I'm not sure if that term that you used was, was the right term. To you know what it is? Because, if, listen, the, the, well, the study of economics is the management of funds, right? Meager yes. resources if you go by the the assessment of the global position, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it is the, the management of resources. Your resources, however they are, comes under finance in terms of these fiscal resources, right? Even if we were to talk natural resources, if there's monetary value, it would come under finance. So all of that is a part of finance. Economics is pivotal to financing structures. In your Ministry of Finance, you have economists so that they can help to create the models, extrapolate the data, and create projections, future forecasts. So that is a part of it. It's not, you can't extract that from out of finance. It is definitely an indelible part of 
My fine. point is, they all are separate ministries for a reason. And but, yeah, but I hear your separate, point. I, I hear your point. They're separate ministries, and I think that that's what makes it interesting. Um, well, finance with the Halkidis is the uh, what is what is the ministers? What is Minister Halkidis's uh, yeah, economic affairs? Economics. Yes. The new Minister of Economic Affairs, right? Which I think is uh, separate and apart from Minister Ministry of Finance as a uh, defining okay. moment, an uh, agenda, mandate. You know, I think the mandate is different. Uh, if he's under the Ministry of Finance, I would I would understand his job and say, okay, I understand he's going to be budgeting and make sure we have enough money. But as Economic Affairs, no. I think he's going to look for strategies on, on what is it uh, we should be focusing on moving forward. And that I, I understand. I think I understand where you're coming from in terms of is there a different strategy yes. for the use of it? But those are finance tools, right? Mm -hmm. So let me do this. So we, we know that the budgeting itself, accounting, right? Mm -hmm. Reconciliation, right? Making sure that the ledgers are, are in order, you know, um, requisites and all of these requisitions and purchasing and whatnot in a much larger scale of a business. Then you have the economics of it, which is the indicators, lagging indicators, projections, et cetera. All of these help us. So when I create my budget, I could say, okay, future forecast, we project a growth of X, Y, and Z. Um, and so that is a part of finance. But I understand that you're saying, hey, this is a, is a separate entity, right? Not necessarily falling under finance. But even with investments, investments is a financial strategy that where the revenue comes from, it still goes to finance. So I think all of these are things that are like a trifecta, um, that work that work together, that work together very well, and I think helps the Minister of Finance, the Prime Minister, because now the Prime Minister, too, doesn't have all of these things under his purview or control mm -hmm. as Prime Minister. I gather as Minister of Finance now, the sole things he does is looks at the lines that come to him. This is what we have to sign to come out. This is what we have to sign for, for funds going in, funds coming out, do you agree with what you see, Minister of Finance? Yes. But when you come to investments, which is creative and innovative thinking, that's that's uh, uh, Chester Cooper. Yes. And he has that with tourism and aviation, which are areas of investment already. Then you have creative thinking of investments. That's Chester mm -hmm. Cooper. That's the creative mm -hmm. thinking, the yes. innovative yes. thinking. Then you have the economics, uh, economic affairs. That is the management of, the projection of, based on revenue coming from investments. So I think that that gives Halkidis that position of saying, okay, this is what we see as the models. And then you say, okay, to the Ministry of Finance, create the budget based off of the models and then coming from investments. So I think it's a great balance that takes yeah. a lot of the burden out of the Ministry of Finance, but they work together as a financial model. And be before we transition to the Attorney General, and also I want to pick, go back to min the Minister of Agriculture to say to explain what all his portfolio is. I'd like to mention that in the previous uh, PLP administration, um, they had Ministry of Finance broken up into three parts before also. They had a Ministry of Investment with uh, Kalis role. And I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, Ryan Pindo is also part of the financial uh, institution too, separate from Ministry, Ministry of Finance. And that was a, also a three-part um, um, division, all working in tangent together. I just want to mention that. But um, I want to mention that the that uh, Clay, Clay Sweeting is also the Minister of Family Island Affairs. I'm not familiar with that term. And I want to know what you, what, what you think that about, Family Island Affairs. Agriculture, okay. Marine, and Family Island Affairs. Mind you, I have. I, I will tell you after the break, because I know I have the, the 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 part of the speech where the prime minister speaks on that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to I want to make sure I know too, because when I heard it at first, I was like, "Huh, family island affairs? That ain't local government, right?" No, no, so, no. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't know what it is. Maybe it is to organize local government. I don't know what that is. I have no idea. It's so I have to. Yes, I, have to go to, I have to go to the prime minister's speech on that. But I wanted to hit something because we're going to come back to that, Clay. That's a great point. Of fi what is that financial uh, family island affairs, right? But I want to hit on the fact that Ryan Pinder as AG was interesting as well. And the prime minister, when he mentioned Ryan Pinder as attorney general, well, first of all, I think a lot of people were surprised saying, okay, we chose Ryan Pinder over Wayne Monroe. But I, I do like Wayne Monroe as national security minister. I do like Wayne Monroe's national 
Minister of National Security. Ryan Penda, I thought was interesting. When the prime minister made his address, uh, he spoke firstly of Ryan Penda's acumen on international or corporate law, taxation, strategies. And then you have Jomo Campbell, who I believe will come as the minister of, uh, 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 junior minister of legal affairs, minister of state for legal affairs, who may actually be the down home legal arm. And when I say down home legal arm, I'm going to say it like that but dealing predominantly with those legal affairs of the AG that is, you know, uh, a domestic. Whereas Ryan Pinder as attorney general will oversee those domestic things, but focus on international uh, and corporate strategies or structures. That's what I got from the prime minister's speech. And I think that also is a mind of financial law. So really looking at it from the outside in, everything seems to be geared at the economy uh, with some form of intention. Now, will it work? That's what we will wait to see. But it seems as if it's geared toward uh, the economy with intention, financial prowess, even in the legal area, when we're talking about brokering uh, deals, when we're talking about going on the road, we're talking about bonds, we're talking about uh, debt. Uh, so I think it's interesting. Your thoughts on Ryan Pender? No, I mean, both men are, are competent individuals in, in the law. I think that <clears throat> their skills will complement each other. Uh, we definitely know that... <clears throat> Ryan Pinder has experience in finances and, and M Lats and whatever it is. And um, I know what I know of Jumo is he's more of a trial lawyer. So it, it should be interesting to see the mixture. And I think that where where Ryan Pinder is strong at, um, it's, it, uh, Jumo might be weak, and, and vice versa, where uh, Jumo might be um, strong at, Ryan may be weak. So I think that they'll be coming as a team. They'll be working in tangent with each other. So it's, it should be interesting to see what the overall e effect with, you know. We know we need, um, there was an issue or concern, local concern that the Attorney General's office was losing a lot of cases, whatever that yes. is, right? And um, it should be interesting in, in, in regards to case, case management and um, working with the judiciary, the Chief Justice, and moving forward. So I, I'm excited about it. I'm definitely excited with the mix. Yeah, I think that there's been some good moves that seem intentional, right? And we have to, we're going to go through the rest of them as we hit. Some of the, we considered obvious. Someone says, uh, Anton says, the PM didn't really say what Clay was going to be doing other than spearheading the blue and green economies in the, in, in the blueprint, I guess. Um, I, I, I think that that's where, you know, with the intention of the economy, uh, Mr. Halkidis, uh said this, and why am I saying Mr. Halkidis? Um, uh, Michael Halkidis, because I, well, I couldn't remember his first name for nothing just now. Senator Michael Halkidis yesterday said his ministry's first order of business will be to assess the current state of the country's finances mm -hmm. and seek to stabilize the economy. The new ministry, and this is in the Today's Guardian, written by Paige McCartney, the new ministry was announced during the official swearing-in ceremony of the first nine cabinet ministers of the newly elected Davis administration. He is the new minister of economic affairs. The ministry will encompass financial services, industry and trade, as well as focus improving the country's ease of doing business and digitization efforts. And with that said, yeah, baby. Okay, now here we go. And I, I'm so happy I read that out loud just yes, now. Yes, yes. The ministry will encompass financial services, industry and trade, as well as focus improving the country's ease of doing business and digitization efforts. That Those are very huge uh, pillars of economic affairs. So I like that they separated it. Um, and it's coming from under finance. And actually, I think they will come from under finance and something else. Industry and trade. Was that under finance? Oh, I thought under, that was under labor once for a time, labor and industry and trade, but no. Well, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, yeah. But I like that they we're talking about the digitization efforts. They're talking about um, uh, fine, uh, trade, industry and trade. They're talking about, of course, financial services and uh, the ease of doing business. Now, this is where it's a focused intention. You know, that's my thing. Okay, now Mr. Halkidis is not the minister of finance of everything. He's with focus, intent, on these key areas, I think those key areas can be doable when they're small like that and the intention is focused. I think that that's great to see uh, and note. And we will, what I think we should be looking for as Bahamians is what are the markers of success? How will we know if digitization 
is reach the point of success where we say, we know that this is milestone one, this is milestone two. Is the government able to reach its milestones or its markers? When we talk about industry and trade, what is industry and trade yes. for the layman to understand? And so we'll say, okay, this is where we wish to go. This is where we would hope industry and trade is at the end of five years. This is our plan to get there. Uh, so it all sounds good, right, Cecil? But economic affairs, those areas are very important to many behaviors. With the ease of doing business, you have to create markers so we know if we're being successful. Yes. This is any, everything with team building is about success. How do we know when the company is successful? We create benchmarks. That is a project. Are we going to project manage it so the Bahamians are on the ride? Or are you going to tell us when it's time to vote, oh, we spent X, Y, and Z money on this. And you're like, but what do I got to do with anything? Mm -hmm. Did we achieve anything or did you just spend money? And this is where it becomes very important to us with how this government governs. It sounds good, CA. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. And, and, and like I said, I just had a flashback. Um, rem, rem, remembering the two, remember I mentioned there are two financial in three financial ministries, um, investment and financial services. I think, if my memory serves me correct, Ryan Pinder was in Minister of Financial Services, and then um, Minister of Investment was Kayla's role, and they work yep. in tangent with the Minister of Finance, uh, um, Finance. So I just want to say that out loud so I can have a base on where I'm talking from. But yes, I'm, I'm excited. Um, I'm, I'm excited. I, I remember you, you read something about blue and green economy. I always thought that was more academic. And to know that we have a minister who will be in charge of that uh, is interesting because I, I don't know how that's going to come about. Um, because we, I, I know we do have um, businesses that makes money from off the sea, the blue economy, oh, right? Michael Pinchot was that minister. He was the minister, exact same minister of marine resources and agriculture. Yes. Uh, and I, I know that we had businesses uh, that makes money off the of the farming green economy, right? And but to say that we have a concentration to explore and expand, um, I, I, this is interesting, and I, I want to uh, hear more about that. Uh, so, so it should be interesting to see what, what goes forward with that. And I was also told too that uh, we will have a Ministry of Natural Resources. And uh, that minister will be Vaughn Miller. That's what I was told. A Ministry of Natural a Resources. Ministry. I was that told. reminds me of the Ministry of Reconstruction, Hurricane Reconstruction. But, hey, if they say that's what they want, um, and who am I to complain? I will sit back and watch to see what is exactly they plan to manage. Because I can see a department doing that. Like how Ministry of Culture is a mayor department. Mm -hmm. We have a Department of Natural Resources whose what? job it is to go and, and e evaluate what type of natural resources we have and to see what kind of tax reform. Because we're not looking like we're going in the, in the, in the industry itself. Oh. So it looked, I assume that we just management managing the taxes and how much money we can make from it. I assume. I, I don't that's, know. Listen, and that's where that for me, I think we know that we have quite a, a, a large amount of natural resources even just going let's just go with oil right um we get the oil no no, no just stop let's just listen to my point let's just, just say we get the oil let's just make sure you don't say no no no, 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 no. Wait, wait. just 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 listen to my point negro okay okay all I'm right listening. let's just let's just go with oil what's your theory of oil again are you listening i didn't i didn't say we have oil i said okay. let's let's go with oil okay let's go with oil oil exploration is a real thing in country right God forbid, Cecil, you're wrong and we have oil. Because, you know, the worst thing will be you're wrong, just like how you were wrong about Lisa Ramming and don't want to get me my count salad. But I digress. Well, God forbid you're wrong, right? And there is oil. You got to manage that. You got to just manage it better than Trinidad and Tobago. Then we have all of this mining that actually happens today that has been happening for over 50, 60, 40, 50 years. Um, but that needs to be managed. And not just managed, how do we maintain it? Sustainable de sustainable development of our natural resources so we're not killing the country. It's not like a lot of putting the cart before the horse. That's what it sounds like. You know what? And you, but this is where I say, too, in uh, 2016, the then Progressive Liberal Party did pay for research in with regard to our natural resources. So they know more than what we know. And so that is that is documented. They have documents. They have a great, a fair idea. Now, the question is, um, 
the function of the ministry. What will it do? Von Miller, I think, is a great uh, champion of it uh, for us, has been the only voice in the House of Assembly for us. And then Reese Chipman later He made down. a speech, man. He made a speech. Uh, hey, but he's, I, I can tell you more than just the speech with Von Miller because I've sat in meetings. We've sat in meetings together championing the, the use of the way forward with natural resources. But I can tell you our foundation has been working with Minister Vaughn Miller, uh, Minister Vaughn, you know, from, from church time. We know what Vaughn Miller has been doing in the background. So we hate you on Brother Vaughn. That's a speech, man. No, we, no, 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 no. That's that speech. I, I, I just find that we like to tout people for, uh, for being heroes for doing the mayor basics, man. The mayor basic. You don't know what the man did. You all you That's know. Why you know them. We didn't know, know it. I was so you know. He did this. He did this. He did that. He did a speech, man. And I'm That's basing his research on other people's work. The speech is based on other people's work. You know um, what? You're just a hater. Vaughn Miller. No. Win. No. Uh, no. Oh, I just someone asked a question. We some, go ahead. No, no, no. You go. You go. You go. I said we in. <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> we have some, some financial difficulties. Kill. Right now, right? And we create new ministries. And I, I'm a little concerned about that because I, I know we challenge. I would say well, we listen, that's, we what I, that's what I was told. We'll see. Uh, but you didn't have a problem with that new ministry called economic, whatever, whatever. That's a real ministry. Though. That's a real no ministry. No <laughs> and we need that because we need the money. <laughs> you know? You know what this government promised? They Go promised ahead. real intention with our natural resources. I support that. I am totally with them on this. If this is indeed, this is what I was told. Um, I, I'm still waiting for that. I, I tried to call to get that final confirmation where it was 100%. I'm feeling pretty good with what I was told, but uh, if that is the case, that's good on them. Now, I hope that it stays in the same building as disaster recovery. We, we ain't got time for no new building. We can't pay no see. new rent. <laughs> new rent. Someone, someone can get that. But anyway, uh, that's not important. Um, I would like to see some um, some benchmarks of accomplishments regarding that. If that ministry does come about, to say, well, we're here, and this is where we move into. So um, I, I, I will wait. I won't critique it anymore. If Vaughn Miller is able to secure that ministry and if it works out, I say kudos to him and we'll see how that goes. We're going to take a quick break, CA. Let me come back. Minister uh, Alfred says, Minister now, Minister Alfred says, Minister of Works. Nice. Uh, your thoughts on Wayne Monroe as Minister of National Security. More and more, we will be back. Right after this, you're listening to The Hit Back with Nahaja Black Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Ha-ha, sugar, sugar, let's get sugary. Softer, smoother, and amazing skin, no. Oh. ha sugar, sugar, we're the sugar ladies. Giving you skin soft as a baby's. Take good care of you. Come visit us at Bahar Treats Bar on East Bay Street. Contact us at 323-6711 or visit us online at www.baharetreat.com. The Water and Sewage Corporation advises the public and its customers that the corporation will commence improvement works on Bamboo Boulevard, South Beach East, beginning Friday, September 3rd, 2021, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. daily for a period of eight weeks. During this time, there may be some interruption in water supply and traffic flow around the work area. The corporation apologizes for any inconvenience caused. What happened to you? You look like you lost your paycheck. Man, I just realized I got scammed out of a bunch of money. They said I won this contest and just needed me to send them some money so I could collect. I mean, to expedite something. Or was it to smooth the process? Man, you're smarter than that. Protect yourself against scams and fraud by following these tips. If you know you didn't enter a competition, you can't win. Never pay to receive a cash prize. If you're being asked, you're being scammed. Check trusted internet sites for verification of information given to you. Do not give your banking details to people you don't know. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. Monitor your bank account regularly for any questionable transactions. Get more information at getmoneysmartbahamas.com. When I had got prostate cancer, my family didn't know if I was going to live at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Within days, I got an appointment. They presented me with treatment options, and they set up a robotic prostatectomy. 
When my scans came back, there are no signs of cancer. They don't see you as a number. They see you as a part of family. I'm going on with my life. That's a real gift. Call us at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. You invest in your children, your home, and your community. But are you investing in your financial future? At CFAL, we specialize in investment management, retirement planning, mutual funds, and private wealth management. Our team of experts never stops helping you plan for tomorrow. Because tomorrow begins today. Call us at 502-7010 to see what our financial advisors can do for you. CFAL, growing wealth for future generations. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Listening to the hit back with Nahaja Black. Uh, everyone, I hope you're having a great day. You're taking care of yourself. You're living your best life. I hope that we are always optimistic, even in bad days. You know, you will never acquire greatness and comfort, and joy will come in the morning. All of those things are sayings that actually work. But when you're in your dark space and when you're in your downtime, when you're in grief, you just gotta just press on. Um, now, yes. Let's take calls. The phone is ringing. Uh, Arlie, the phone is ringing. Let's take some calls and uh, get some folks on the line. Let me know when you got them on the line, Arlie. What are the phone line numbers? And I will definitely get them. Cecil, what are the what are the phone line numbers? You're supposed to know this by now. You, and you're muted again. Don't blame me. Do you don't talk, stop talking to yourself. Stop talking to yourself. Ain't nobody at fault. 323 3254316. 325-4259. That's uh, 325-4316, 325-4259, and 323-6232. We got a call on the line. Call, you're on the head back. Welcome. What's up, Nigel Black? I'm well, man. And you? I'm quite well. I'm quite well. Good stuff. I've looked over and scrutinized these, um, these appointments. And I want to go on a limb here. Okay, I like this. I I think for the first time in our history, we could have a minister of finance who is an outsider. Who's an outsider? What do you mean? Outside, he is outside. He is out. He has to be outside of politics. But they won't be able to do it until they do some kind of some kind of amendment. In the house. Okay, you got to break it down for me because that I don't even understand. Why do you? Why would you think that? And how serious that that one's? Okay, you know, the, you know, Davis is the minister of finance, right? Yeah. Okay, he is. He is going to have to be a person who has who has no who has who has no leanings or like no or like no um, um, no side. Okay. He's going to have to be a self-directed. He's going to be a self-directed um, um, individual. Now, I say that primarily because on who on who they have appointed as the as the attorney general. This is a guy who is steeped in finances, who knows what the deal is on the ground all around the world, and we're going to have some kind of legislation in place. In the in the in the forthcoming in the in the forthcoming in the forthcoming in the forthcoming future that allows Bahamians to invest outside of this country. Okay, well, you know what? That's definitely a thought. Um, but I appreciate you. I, I that's definitely an out, an outside one. Thank you so much, caller. Let me get to the next call. Caller, you're on the head back. Welcome. All right, um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How you doing, Ajo? What's up, buddy? Everything's cool, man, and, and good afternoon to your to your co-host, um, yeah. um, Mr. Neri. Yeah, good afternoon to the nation. Um, Nahaja, just wanted to add, 
you all were speculating on the um, um, the Ministry of Economic Affairs, which the which Minister Alkides is responsible for, and um, um, his ministry would also cross um, um, Ministry of Finance to to some degree, and so he would also have some level of oversight with regards to the Ministry of Finance in the country. Right? I wanted to add I'm sorry, hold on, Anton. Who's this? Pardon me? I'm sorry, who, who are you referring to? I missed that. You all spoke about the Ministry of Economic Affairs earlier in the conversation. Oh. Yes, okay, okay. Go ahead. With sorry. Minister Halkidis. Yes. And and you all were, and, and, and you read a statement from an interview Minister Halkidis gave during his swearing in. Yes. But his ministry would also encompass, to some degree, some responsibilities from the Ministry of Finance, right? Mm -hmm. And so perhaps mm -hmm. the next time you get an opportunity to interview him, you can you can delve into that with him. But yeah. um, um, uh, Cecil also make a, made a made a statement that's that's incorrect. He would have stated that that um, um, at a time when the government needs to be saving money, we are seeking to add new ministries, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, Cecil, when Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Brave Davis is completed with his uh, cabinet minister's uh, portfolio, then you would be able to make a determination of if we are moving in the right direction or not, or if we have added more ministries than is the normal custom in, in, in the cabinet portfolio. And so I believe you're speaking, not I believe, you're speaking prematurely and incorrectly on that regard. But however, whatever the decision is, at the end of the day, the Prime Minister of the country is very strategic in his appointments. He's very studied, and he understands what the country needs as his plans and our blueprint already dictates. And so he's moving in, in accordance with that. And at the end of the day, it will be to the benefit of the Bahamian people, all Bahamians. Thank you for the opportunity, Naja. Thank you so much, Anton. Appreciate You're you. Welcome. All right. We have any more calls, producer? And don't forget, guys, you can feel free to give us a call. Um, CA. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing what else uh, comes about. I went and I looked for the document um, to say what Clay Sweeting's, uh, the Family Island Affairs, someone said uh, to me, let me see, uh, what was it? Mm -hmm. And someone asked about the blue economy, local government, maybe it's about local government. Um, and well, if it is- festivals, who knows? Could be both festivals, right? but that's Ministry of Culture. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, to me, I'm just curious as to what that will actually entail and encompass. Someone asked a great question um, about the orange economy, right, in terms of culture, mm -hmm. right? We, we have the blue and the green. We still have yet to be told who is the Minister of Youth, Sports, and Culture. Will uh, culture, but should culture be something or... The... Okay, so here's one thing. We always... so. I'm finding that culture needs, I, I, I do believe that culture really needs better representation. Um, I don't necessarily like that we clump these three in because that ministry gets the least amount in its budget, but it holds some very pertinent and impactful ministries. Youth by itself is one of those that should have a very strong budget so it can help to stop crime before it starts. We get young men uh, young boys and girls into sports early as extracurriculum, extracurricular programs, uh, youth programs, fund. What happened to um, Mr. Penn's Boys Brigade? Has that fizzled out and died, Simpson C. Penn's Boys Brigade? Is it still functioning? Yeah, it still functions. Is it as robust as it used to be? I hear no one talking about it. I really boys don't. Brigade is still robust. They have uh, robust. Boys Brigade, Royal Ambassadors, uh, Awana, all of those functions. But you know, we're in the middle of COVID, so it's hard to have these. No, no, no. but before COVID, I mean, like, are, yeah, are, are, yeah. are they getting sufficient funding? Um, are they being taken care of to the point where we can actually say, okay, each community, not constituency, but each community has a spot, a, hair, a headquarters where it says, okay, this is where our young men come after school, uh, a facility where if you can't get online and current is off at your house, you can go to this facility that's across the street so our children can be in school. Youth needs more investment, just as education does. And because we always talk about crime at the end, when the crime is committed, but not at the rehabilitative effort or the pre, uh, preventative efforts. And so youth, sports, and culture 
each need to be treated with the respect that they deserve because culture is an exportable item. And just as my guests before, Dr. Hamilton and, and Dr. James were on, those are the creatives and that those in industries can be exported. I think culture needs its own bit of respect as well as the orange economy, something that can be exported. Um, so we still don't know who that minister is and will that be something that's changed? Uh, we, I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? I, I agree. I, I never thought about um, if these private institutions should be publicly financed. I, I always thought that they, most of them are supported by the church, you know, and, and the church finance them. But um, I, I, I like the idea of government giving each um, um, youth program a stipend for them to run the operation and perhaps how the, the administrators of these programs have a, a stipend in terms of paychecks as they volunteer time and to buy supplies and efforts. I, I have no problem with that. But I remember the, the government did say it's going to have a youth program, a, a national, a national, help me out here, uh, a national, national program. A national, so, some sort of national. Service, a national service, yes. Yeah. So that, I, I anticipate that to see how that is going to be worked about, if that's going to be incorporated in the school or is it an after-school program? Is it going to be mandatory? And when I say mandatory, do high-end schools, you know, the Life of Key schools, mm -hmm. the, 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 um, the Windsor schools, uh, and stuff like that, you know, will they be included in this national service or this national service is for public schools only and, and the lower-end private schools? So uh, these conversations must be held, held and yeah. held. Uh, and um, it should be interesting to see what, what would be the conclusion for it. Yeah, and I think, listen, we spend a lot of money on policing, right? We spend a lot of money on crime and policing. We spend millions of dollars on drones, right? We spend millions of, every year, it feels like police get more cars. But, uh, you know, we still got a lot of guns on the streets. How do we take some of that and use it for preventative measures and uh, rehabilitative measures so that we don't have recidivism, right? So we, we don't have people going in jail, coming out and going back into crime. Or, you know, how do we catch the young boy or the young girl earlier? And uh, perhaps that is a strategy because all of this, the society by and large, when we look at uh, youth sports and culture, I think it's a disservice because if you put a coach there, the coach is going to be innately. He wants to, you know, he or she wants to be uh, interested in all, but they have a leaning tendency towards sports and youth. But then culture might not get a good budget because of the lack of understanding with culture, right? You put a cultural person there, they will tend to go youth and culture, but not lean towards sports. So it's like the, that trifecta is not working. I don't believe that it works in a balanced position. Um, and I think that culture has to be understood as an economic driver as well. And perhaps it should find itself in another ministry where it is respected for the economic force it is. And uh, sports as something that is economic for the individual, but uplifting for the more social fabric of society as well as youth. So I, maybe that's something we need to look into because I don't think the trifecta works out to anyone's advantage when we talk about, uh, you know, youth sport and culture. I think it's just as a lazy one there. All right. C.A. Neary joining me in studio. There is uh, some other appointments, Cecil, of course. We know Glennis Hannah Martin uh, is the lone female right now in cabinet. And she is the Minister of Education. Were you surprised by that post? I, I thought it was going to put her in transport. And I said, Lord, she needs a, 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 not a better post, to, but a, a more a senior post where people can appreciate her. Um, I, and I, I heard that you identify Glenn Tanamata as female or, or woman, right? But she's more than that. She is of equal course, she and, is. And, 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 and capable and more capable. I, she's I, more I, capable than, than, than most than of the men know. there. Right, yeah. all the men yeah. there, right? So I, I think she that could very she, well have been the leader of the party. Just so yes, you know. yes, yes. So any position, she could have been minister of finance, minister of national security, and I expected a big role for her, right? And and I I, and I believe that um, I, I believe that Mr. Philip Davis uh, asked her to choose a ministry that That's she wants I mean. because how senior she is, and I think that she purposely chose minister minister ministry of um, education. Because she has a passion for for the youth, so I I, I, I yeah, believe and she's that she's very I senior. Yes. I, I think you have after you go to her, say, well, of course you know Chester's the deputy, yes. right? Um, 
but Glennis, you are the most senior here. You are yes. the winningest member of parliament yes. in the House of Assembly. You are a force to be reckoned with. You won by the largest margin. You are the champion and the daughter of a great, and you yourself will get a state, uh, God forbid, anytime soon, but a state funeral to mark the manner of your bearing. Glennis Hannah Martin, what do you want to do? Yes, I believe that's what happened. I sincerely I, I, think she said, I think she said prime minister. And he said, no, 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 that's taken. What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> minister of finance. No, no, that's taken too. No, 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 that's <laughs> taken already. So, All right. I'll take education then. <laughs> All right, then. Fine. Yes. yes. <laughs> but um, I think that that's interesting, right? I think that that's interesting. And I'm curious as to, because uh, Madam Hannah Martin is one that is a, a, a passionate soul, right? She is yes. She's a visionary individual. Um, what does she see in uh, education that she feels as if she can build upon and uh, change? Because, you know, I got my issues with our educational system where if you want better education, you pay for it. But it doesn't mean that it's superb, right? And it's unfortunate because those who have pay more. And I came up in, in, in public school, right? I, you, you know, I'm a public school yeah. woman, right? And, and I love RM Bailey for all of the programs that come into public school that ain't in private schools. That's one of the great things about public schools. Um, but I'm curious as to what she'll do. What are your thoughts there? Um, mind you, the, the Ministry of Education is a hard ministry to manage mm -hmm. um, with little successes. And I, and I, I want to explain what this little success meaning, what, what statement I made. Um, we know we always have issues with school opening on time. We know we always complain about grades and, and accomplishments, right? So um, the idea that she... To me, again, voluntary walked into that, that wasp nest uh, makes me think that she believes she, she can make a difference. Um, yeah. We know that we have issues with the union, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, 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 I'm, I'm waiting to see what is it <laughs> that she saw in this ministry that she said, okay, I'm going to go gun ho in this, you know? <laughs> what, what a difference does she believe that she can make? Because, um, you know, every so often we say, oh, we had the average till we, we, we settle down. Yeah. This is our 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 our, our course that we sing. Oh, this is, we can't expect nothing better. They they mm -hmm. the average people, mm -hmm. and for a, a lady who has so much success in her political career, to choose a ministry like this, mm -hmm. where every um, success will be incremental, a little small yeah. here, right? Uh, it should be interesting to see because you know, come September, not only September, come December, parents will be complaining. Right, you know what? Be irate. Yeah, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we ain't coming. We ain't remember that. Oh, she's the daughter of of Eddie Harris. That's Glennis. No, I don't care. Oh, that's Glennis, my friend. And yeah. we ain't care. It's <laughs> about our children, and we ain't getting the the results. The platform ain't working. I get my my laptop. You know, so she have a lot to bear come by December. So I, it, it's a big big role she took um, yeah. to to try change. You know. Do you know what I think too, CA? Uh, something that I think that it's important that we, that I, I'm thinking, right? What I'm thinking is that, like you said, what would make you make that move? There's very little reward in this. Everything is incremental. But what if I look at myself and I say, okay, I submit to leadership that I, whose vision I believe in, right? I, I, I you know, you would be a terrible person in terms of your character, I believe, if, um, if you have a choice to submit under someone's leadership and you you disagree with them so that you know completely that you are always at war with their style of leadership or their vision, you know you're at enmity with this. And if you choose to do that, you're disingenuous and not helping the team, right? So you know that Glennis Hannah Martin is not, is not one to set herself up to fail. She definitely is one who seeks to move forward and build, etc. What if... We sit here on the outside not realizing that Philip Brave Davis has created an anthem with regard to or a vision with regards to education. That will be one that transcends what we are accustomed to, understanding the impact and importance of education in the changing or transitioning of the country. Then Glennis is sitting at the helm of something that is transitional, that is, uh, that is uh, a legacy-defining work, and maybe he's saying, I need my best to steer this ship. And also, as a note, I am not 
too keen on this already playing out this idea of that Glennis Hannah Martin and Belinda Wilson would be at war. Two strong females going at each other like it's a cat. Yeah, that was disappointing. That was disappointing. Yeah. I see that narrative. That it's very disappointing. And I, for folks, Belinda Wilson is a very sensible human being. Yes, you know? she is. <laughs> and, and they see <laughs> her as a monster yes, and cantankerous no. when usually all of her uh, efforts and all of her complaints is, mm -hmm. is warranted. She comes and says, yes. you know, this is what we need. <laughs> And then you find out that the ministry is not providing, and then she she reacts. Yes, yes, and and so I think that, and she, my thing is, Belinda Wilson is a sensible. I mean, when I say sensible, I mean very smart, yes. articulate female leader for her uh, her contingency, her grouping, mm -hmm. and she's not irrational. Yes. My thing is though, she is very dogged in her position. Mm -hmm. We need progress. My grouping needs to be respected. We want to have a seat at the table since we are pieces on the board. We want to, we need support. So I, I this narrative for me is uh, very disheartening that they want to pit two brilliant women against each yes. other like we can't work together. But I, I believe um, uh, Mahana Martin is, is competent and she is, um, I believe she will approach this as a partnership. This is not mm -hmm. a competition. Exactly. She's a sensible lady. I mean, she's yeah. proven herself to be conscientious of, of what is it that the her community wants and what is the Bahamas wants. And, and you, you know, when those persons in Darren, that she could go and explain your issues and, and your mm -hmm. problems that she's working out. So I believe she's going to approach this the same way. I believe any minute now, we expect her to call the union president. They sit down for tea or coffee, whatever it is, and All talk the about the issues and come to compromise and say, this is what I'm prepared to do. This is what we're working with. Um, how, how, what is it that you can to assist me of making this uh, uh, to accomplish? So I expect great things from the, the both of them in this, in this particular team. I think it's going to be a teamwork moving forward instead of a combative type at, uh, um, situation that it was before. I think it's going to be very cordial and team oriented moving forward. We got to go. I can't believe six o'clock hit us already. See you, Nuri. Thank you, buddy. You're listening to the hit back with Nahaja Black, everyone. See you tomorrow. We're out. <laughs>